here is another video that is the result of someone else's question. They wanted to know how you could build a room addition with a angled section. And of course that would look something like this. And you're probably thinking, why would anyone ever want to do this? But I have actually worked on projects where there was a tree that someone didn't want to remove and um, or maybe it was next to a building something like that someone else's property that's pretty uh, common one time i remember working on a house down by the beach where the lot um, let's say that it was um, 30 foot in the front and 20 foot in the back and um, they built the house right up against the property and it was shaped kind of like the lot and it was difficult because i had to put a set of stairs in like uh, to, to make it work and it wasn't uh, wasn't very easy it didn't look that good when it was done but that's not what we're going to run into here the um, angled wall is at a 45 degree angle plates there and of course uh, if you do cut your corner like this where both of the top plates don't lap you're going to need a strap and you might even need a longer strap. Bottom, same um, cut. And again, I'm going to kind of throw in a couple of different cuts um, throughout the um, video here to give you an idea of what you can do. Um, you just give you, give you some more options on how to build things. So here we have it here. This framing plate butts up against this one. So it's cut at a 45 degree angle. It's not mitered. The other one was mitered at a 22 and a half degree angle. This one here is going to be a 45 degree angle on this one, 45 degree angle on this one, and then the top plates will simply lap. So this one butted up against this one. So this one ran through, and then this one here is going to run through. Get an idea there, and you just simply nail these plates together and that creates a nice tie. So hopefully that makes sense. Now I wanted to show you this. This really isn't that big of a deal, but if you have a square um, you know, plate, you just want to square it off and then cut a 45 degree angle. This isn't going to be a big deal. You can uh, finish this off still with by taking a framing stud and then bringing it over if you wanted to, or cut one at a 45 degree angle to where it would run this way and you could fill this area in. Not going to be a big deal to um, finish that if this is um, if this is going to be easier than doing this here. Next up, let's go ahead and install the ceiling joist. 16 inches on center and a 45 degree angle cut here. And um, these are not going to need to be shaped like this here because the rafters are going to be a little higher here that'll make more sense in the, a little further along in the video now this is just a way that i think is going to be a little easier and this is actually how i would build this myself i would put some type of a straight edge underneath the rafters set it on top of the ceiling joist and then i can use that to support my rafters temporarily um, so that i can mark and cut them just really seems like a easy way to do it and if you have a longer section you might need to use a 2x6 or a 2x8 make sure the board is straight and you might need to put some type of a support leg or support brace underneath it to um, prevent it from sagging at the end this section right here seems like it would be fine like this it's only cantilevering off um, this far here everything else is supported and then we're going to just put our rafters in. Of course, you're going to do this one at a time. You won't need to install all of the rafters. You can feel free to, um, you know, you're going to temporarily support them to the ridge, set them on top of your um, straight edge. And you can see how this hopefully that makes sense. And uh, but again, I think something like this, um, just doing one at a time, setting the board up and connecting one of them to the ridge and then marking them accordingly is going to be about the best way to go. So let's go ahead and remove the other rafters. 
do one at a time here put it up to next to the ceiling joist and this one you're actually going to be able to nail into the ceiling joist to create the tie going across and uh, you might actually need to do some modifications if your ceiling joist rafter ties or the ceiling joist you're going to use as rafter ties won't work and if you have any um, questions about that go to the website go to the um, framing section under the home building framing and then go to the roof framing and uh, um, look for rafter ties get some more information on that so let's go ahead and put our first mark here and we're simply just going to use a straight edge or a level and come up and uh, draw a line here uh, put our board back there just kind of giving you an idea here of uh, without the ceiling joist what we're going to need to do same on the other side this is going to be a plumb or vertically level line and again these are just going to be reference points sometimes you're not going to be actually cutting this but you might need it as a reference point so hopefully that makes sense what we're doing and then you can connect to the lines on the top and the bottom and now you have an idea where the wall is going to be positioned here and you can use that for your um, any cutting notching so for example if I was going to cut a seat cut on this one instead I'm going to put a block underneath it I'm going to angle the block but if I wanted to put a seat cut on this I could take the rafter down and then cut the seat cut and then set it on top of a um, square block or a block with 90 degree angles all the way around but we're going to use a shaped block it's going to have an angle at the top of it and another thing you're going to have to um, think about is whether or not you need to cut the rafters down here we have a a three and a half inch wide overhang our rafter tails we have a two by six rafter that needs to be cut down this is all something you can do with these reference points um, when you are shaping the rafter before you install it so um, put the rafter in you're going to um, use some screws to attach it to the ridge maybe use some screws to temporarily attach it to um, a board uh, maybe the ceiling joist um, even the straight edge to prevent it from moving and then you could mark everything out pull the board down and um, cut everything that you need now I want to point out here I just took this angle I did not run or this block I didn't run it parallel to the um, wall here I just I brought it over here this isn't a block this blocks gonna be more for you can nail the plywood into it the roof sheathing and then attach it to the framing plates um, it's not going to be used for any type of backing or anything so I just kind of threw out another idea there I shaped this block so it can nail to the top of the sheathing and uh, um, so we have a couple of blocks that will nail this one here can always be shaped to um, for that you can always if you know you can always put a if you need a two by eight and then another two by eight on top to shape the blocks um, also and you could connect those together with some straps if you were worried about it and of course the gable rafter here we have our gable studs supporting it and of course I have the square cut on the bottom here I was kind of giving you giving you an idea of if I was to put a um, level cut on the bottom here I could use a square board to support in any one of these rafters that could be done on all of these rafters by the way get an idea of how the roof sheathing would uh, tie to these two boards next up we will need to install our eave blocks and uh, this is probably going to take you a little bit of time to do something like this going to have to figure out the angle of the cut there and not going to be that difficult but uh, might be a little trial and error stuff to do there 
a view of it from the bottom. And here we have our blocks so that we have some backing in case we need to nail siding or our lath for our stucco to. We're going to be able to have something to attach it to. That's why we have the different sized blocks in there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our fascia board. We're going to have a two foot overhang here. And then for the gable end, we have a 12 inch overhang. And I'm going to have a 12 inch overhang coming off of here. You could always have a 12 inch overhang, maybe a 18 inch overhang and a two foot overhang. You don't, there's no specific rules for something like this. Um, uh, you know, you just have to make sure that the rafters and the um, fascia, the cantilever will actually support the load that would be transferring from the overhang to the building. So give you an idea here. And another cut that I did, you could have a square cut here like we did over on the framing. Square cut and then a 45 degree angle. Only problem with that is you're going to have something like this on the inside. And if, you know, from the outside you're fine, this is going to be easier. Go for it. If the, um, you know, if not, you can miter the other side. I have it mitered, 22 and a half degree angle kind of a thing. Take a look at it from the front there. And like I said earlier, we're going to have a level board here and then an angled board here and then an angled board up here. Put our sheathing on. Take a look at it from the side there. And that is it for this video. So hope it helps. Um, you know, if there are any things that you have questions for specific sections of this video that I did not explain, feel free to leave your questions in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.